In this lesson, we are going to talk about multiplying a vector by a scalar, by a number, a real number. For instance, let's say we have vector v, and we multiply it with a number like a. What will happen to vector a? What is the resulting vector? In general, when you multiply a vector by any real number, if the real number a is greater than 0, then the new vector, let's call it r, is going to be the same vector v, the magnitude multiplied by a, so it's going to be a times the magnitude of v. I'm going to show it like this and it's going to have the same direction as v so if you multiply the vector v with a constant a which is a positive number you're going to get the same you're going to get a vector which is in the same direction as v but the magnitude is going to be the magnitude of v times the absolute value of a which is going to be still positive because a we are assuming is positive in case that a is negative we are going to have the same thing but the direction is going to be in opposite direction so if I multiply it by a which is negative I'm going to get another vector which is going to be a vector in opposite direction to V and the magnitude is going to be the absolute value of A times the magnitude of V and the direction again is going to be opposite direction in the first example we have a set of vectors A, B, C, D, E, F and V now the question is that which of these vectors are scalar multiples of vector v? You can see that the vector v, which is given here, you can see that vector a, vector c, v, vector d, and vector f. So vector a, vector c, vector and vector f they are going to be parallel to vector v so these mean, this means that these vectors are scalar multiple of vector v because they are parallel and now it says find the scalar k for each scalar multiple in part a for instance let's look at vector a Vector A seems to be about three times the magnitude of vector V. So for vector A, we can say that K is 3 because A is in the same direction as vector V, so it's going to be positive, and the magnitude is almost three times. For vector C, we can see that it's the same direction and the magnitude is almost I mean the magnitude of vector C is almost the same as V so we can say that K is equal to 1 for vector D we can see that D is in opposite direction so it's going to be negative and the magnitude is half so it's going to be 0.5 and for vector F since it's in opposite direction so it's going to be negative and it's almost double the size of V so it's going to be negative 2 now if you look at other vectors like B like E these are not scalar multiple of V because they are not parallel to V 
In the next example, we have a vector u, which has a magnitude of 100 kilometers per hour. So let's draw a vector u. We know that also the direction is north 40 degrees east. So this is going to be 40 degrees and it's 100 kilometers per hour. Draw a vector to represent each scalar multiplication described in words the resulting vector. For instance, vector 3u. This means that it's triple in magnitude and in the same direction. So this means that if I represent this one as vector v, vector v is going to be something like this one, which is 300 kilometers per hour, but the same direction, which is north 40 degrees east. The next one, if this one is vector, let's say, w, it's 0.5v, a u. So it's going to be half of it, which is going to be 50, the same direction again, which is 40 degrees east of north. So this is going to be your vector w. And the last one, is going to be negative 2u. If again, if this vector from here to here is from here to here, 100 is our vector v, negative 2u is going to be 200 but in opposite direction. So if this is vector z, so this is going to be z, which is going to be 200 kilometers per hour and it's going to be in opposite direction now if you want to use the quadrant notation then we have to find the angle that it makes with the north south line if I use the north one then it's going to be this angle. Now, we know that this angle here is 40, so this is 40, and this up to here is 180, so 180 plus 40 is 220, so this is going to be 200 kilometers per hour, and it's going to be north, 220 degrees east. Now we are going to define the term collinear vectors. What exactly is collinear vectors? Collinear vectors are vectors that if we arrange them tail to tail, they lie on a straight line. For instance, if I have a vector u like this and a vector v like this one, if I arrange them so that the endpoints they lie together and then u and v they are on the same line, then I say these are collinear. For instance, in this case, these two vectors are collinear. Now, the direction is not important. For instance, I can have u like this one and v like this. Still, if I put the tail on top of each other, like this one, you can see that the vectors, they lie on the same line. So these are collinear, but opposite direction. But if I have a vector u like this one and a vector v like this one, if I put the tails together, you will see that u and v are not on the same line, so these are not collinear. In general, the collinear vectors are the one that they are scalar multiple of each other. For instance, in the case of these two, I can say that u is 
k times v. So if two vectors can be written as scalar multiple of each other, then we know that the, those two vectors are collinear. Remember, in algebra, the distributive property of numbers. Refresh your memory, for instance, if I have something like 3 times 2 plus 4, this is the same as if I distribute 3 inside is 3 times 2 plus 3 times 4, which is 6 plus 12, which is 18. Vectors have the same property too, meaning if I have a number like k, a real number, which is multiplied by the sum of two vectors or the difference of two vectors, let's say vector a plus or minus vector b, this is the same as if you distribute k inside you get ka plus or minus kb. This is the distributive property of vectors. We also have the associative property. Again, to refresh your memory, if I have, let's say, um, 3 times 2 times 4 is the same as 3 times 2 times 4. This was the associative property which is the same as 3 times 8, which is 24. With vectors, is the same thing too. If we have two scalars, a and b, and we multiply a, b by a vector, let's say, v, this is the same as a times b, v. You get the same thing. This is the associative properties of vectors. Now we are going to define the linear combination of vectors. Let's assume that you have two vectors a and b. So a is one vector, b is another vector. If I can somehow write a relationship like s a plus r b where s and r are two real numbers, then we call SA plus RB a linear combination of vectors A and B. For instance, give you an example, if I can write 4A plus 2B, this is called a linear combination of vectors A or A and B. Or I can write negative 3A plus 0.75b. Again, this is another linear combination of two vectors a and b. In the next example, we have a trapezoid ABCD with BC parallel to AD and AD equals 3BC. So the magnitude of AD is 3 times BC. If AB is 3U, AB is 3U, and BC is V, we have to express AD, vector AD, BD, and CD as linear combinations of U and V. For the first one, AD, we, we, can, we can use the fact that AD is 3BC, and BC is given to be V, so AD is 3V. This is already given. For BD, BD, we know that the vector is going to go from B to D, some, something like this one. So BD is going to be BA plus AD. But BA, we know that AB is U, so BA is negative U, plus AD. We found that AD is 3V, 
So BD is 3V minus vector U. Now the last one is CD. If we want to find CD, we can say that CD is CB plus BA plus AD. But CB is negative V plus BA is negative U plus AD. AD we found to be 3V. So negative V plus 3V is 2V minus U. These are all linear combinations of vectors U and V. In the next example, we have a hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F with these properties that opposite sides are parallel and equal and FC is 2AB. FC, which is going to be something like this diagonal, is twice the magnitude of AB. We are saying that AB is U, so this is U, and FA is vector V. Now we are supposed to express the following vectors in terms of U and V and simplify. The first one is vector CF. We know that vector FZ is equal to twice AB. AB is U. So FC is going to be 2 times AB which is U. So CF is negative 2U. The next vector that we are going to find is FB. Vector FB, which is this vector, I can write it as FA plus AB, but FA is V, AB is U, so it's going to be V plus U. The next one is vector FD. Vector FD is going to be this vector. Now, to write FD, I can write FD as FC plus CD. Now, I know that FC is twice AB, which is U. So it's going to be 2U. This is FC. And CD is parallel to FA vector V but in opposite direction, so it's going to be minus V. So it's going to be 2U minus V. And the last one is we have to find vector CA. Vector CA is going to be this vector. Now to find vector CA, I can write CA as CF plus FA. But CF has the same magnitude as FC, which is 2U, but in opposite direction. So it's going to be negative 2U plus FA. FA is V. So it's going to be V minus 2U. In the last example, we have Newton's second law of motion, which states the force of gravity, F sub j, F, F sub g, in newtons is equal to the mass m in kilogram times the acceleration due to, to gravity g in terms in meters per square second, or Fg is mg. Now, if we know that the gravity on Earth's surface is 9.8 meters per square second downward and on moon is 1.63 meters per square second 
downward. The first part says, write an equation for the force of gravity on Earth. The equation becomes F G vector is equal to 9.8 times mass downward. The next part of the question says if a person which is 60 kilogram stands on the Earth's surface, what is the force of gravity? We use the equation which we found here. We say that F sub G is going to be 9.8 times 60. It's going to be Newton downward, which if you simplify it, is going to be 588 Newton downward. Part C says write a vector equation for the force of gravity on the moon. So F, the vector, sub G, is going to be 1.63 times the mass, again, downward. And the last part says what is the weight, which is the force of gravity, on the moon? of a 60 kilogram person so F sub G is going to be 1.63 times 60 Newton downward which if we simplify it is going to be 97.8 Newton downward